if you say health care, you immediately need to watch everybody go giddy over the $2 trillion the U.S. alone is currently spending on annual sickness care, disease treatment, and die. So the next thing I've got to talk about, I want to talk about vitalism in health care, is what do we mean by health care and how far off are we coming from this non-vitalistic perspective that people are just machines that we get to fiddle with, that we're actually spending $2 trillion in the United States a year on health care, but it's not really about how can that super wisdom <laughs> express itself better. It's about how can I fix this person when they're broken? The fixer. That's the trap that a health care provider falls in who doesn't properly attribute where health comes from. When your body's not working right. Someone said it earlier on the stage, look, your body's not working right, let me fix it. But vitalism says, that can't happen. You could help my body fix itself. You can't fix it. Your brain intelligence, as a matter of fact, the combined brain intelligence of the entire human species using strictly empirical methods of thinking and reasoning hasn't yet figured out how the human body works enough to run it, make it, repair it, build it, and yet the human body makes, builds, repairs, and runs itself every day. So we're spending $2 trillion on someone telling us they're helping us do what we do on our own if there's not a problem. We are. I've got no criticism intended. That's, that's the way the economics of it is, right? We ain't buying any health from that because health comes free from within you as long as that vis medicatrix, vis intelligere nature, as long as the power of nature can simply express itself through you. Right? First nine months, mama doesn't even know what's going on and it builds itself inside of mama and pop it out it comes. And in 20 years, it builds itself around her. Amazing. <laughs> but here's the problem. With health care, defined by medicine as the scientific diagnosis and treatment of disease, how can we operationalize vitalism into that system? Yeah. Well, the fact is, vitalism is not the support for or the criticism of any or every one of the procedures and treatments and processes and suggested ways we help ourselves that we've been talking up on that stage. That's why I'm going to talk about vitalism the whole way through before I even start to talk about chiropractic. Because chiropractic isn't vitalism. Chiropractic is a profession that based on our fundamental vitalistic respect for the body's own healing abilities has chosen a different way to help. Here's how I want to help my patient because I recognize the vitalistic proposition. All I want to do is get the interference out of the way because I actually trust my patient's own innate intelligence to be a better human than I am. And I'll stand by that. Does it take courage to stand by that? Yep, that original courage to say, oops, the body's wisdom is greater than my own. Even though I'm the doctor, I'm the healer, I'm the smart guy, none of that is actually true. I'm just a helper. The body's wisdom is greater than mine. Chiropractics only one possible expression of that fundamental proposition. So let's talk about how the fundamental proposition would actually change healthcare. Because it would. Placing the healer within the body redefines the healthcare practitioner as an adaptive assistance provider. You can laugh, but I don't see it any other way. When my surgeon, I've had retinal detachments in both us. And I went to a surgeon and said, can you help me? Because by the way, I don't know why my retina detached. Apparently my innate intelligence wasn't on the job that day. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it just met the limits of its ability to express itself. Maybe it didn't have the right nutritional response. Maybe I get hit in the back of the head. But when my retina detached, I had a guy who was willing, a very clean surgical environment, and with some very precise tools, and with incredible skill that he had developed by training, to wound my eyes. My eyes were broken, so I asked him to break them some more. I'm characterizing it that way specifically because that's all my surgeon could do for me. He told me that he couldn't repair my, that he couldn't heal me. He told me that all he could do was cut my eye open, suck the juice out, lay my head back so the retina could kind of float back, and then laser burn it down to 2,500 times. Pump my eye full of air, wrap a rubber band around it, and then push me out the door and say,
say, come back in six weeks and let me see how you're doing with that. And by the way, his intervention was not vitalistic or unvitalistic. The vitalism was in me. He just was clever enough to figure out how he could do all those horrible things. That sounds gross when I describe it. All those horrible things to my eyes, and yet trust. Was my eye surgeon vitalistic? I think he was. Because I think he was willing to cut my eye and suck the juice out of it, wrap a rubber band around it, on his firm belief that my body would have the capability to heal the damage he just did. And that when it healed, it would actually heal so it could still see again. Thank you very much to doctors. My two eyes are dead. But where was the vitamins in that whole interaction? It didn't come from my health care provider, who was a surgeon. He just did a controlled wounding. <laughs> he did. <laughs> no comedy intended. There's a really fancy wounding. The second one took him seven hours to wound my eye that way. <laughs> and here's the thing. It's taken me about a year and a half to actually heal my retina enough that I can now see better than I could see before the surgery. But if the surgery did the job, I should have been able to see better as soon as it was done. But no, it took about a year and a half of healing. Vis medicatrix, in that case, I'm going to say vis medicatrix, because I know what my body was doing that was healing that I Could I have a vitalistic perspective on that incredibly traumatic medical intervention? Because that's what it was, trauma. He wounded my eye with a scalpel and a laser. Yes, I have a completely vitalistic uh, uh, perspective on it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you both of my vitalistic perspectives on this. First of all, as a possible surgery subject, I want to make sure that my own body mind, that super intelligence that Lewis Thomas claims is in me. I've been hearing about from chiropractors, those crazy wackos, innate intelligence all my life, was able to do what I, it had the capability to do, so I wanted to make sure my was healthy, my diet was good, I was unsubluxated, my spine was checked, clear. All of that didn't have anything to do with healing my eye or not healing my eye or having surgery or not. I just want to make sure that that this intelligere nature could come through, express itself. But by the way, I was doing that before my surgery, before my surgery too. I don't, I don't want to just wait till I have surgery before I make sure that's happening. By the way, my second vitalistic perspective, I really wish that I had known that my surgeon was expressing his, this intelligere nature as perfectly as possible. I wouldn't want to have any, he had any problems that you could have helped him with. I wouldn't have had the problems fixed before he comes in. All right? Do I want my surgeon to be expressing his innate intelligence as perfectly as possible before he proposes to do surgery on me? That's a healthcare relationship. Provider, provider. The vitalism in it is all about whether that body is expressing that fundamental capacity it has to solve its own problems. And in each case, the vitalism is internal to the person you're talking about. So vitalism relative to, to, well, to, uh, relative to a health care provider. I want every health care provider in this room, whether you're a chiropractor, whether you're in Ayurvedic medicine, whether you're a naturopath, whether you're a medical doctor, to be as fully expressive of your own vital consciousness while you're in the health care situation. But then, let's talk about how it changes the health care situation. It actually creates a couple of new categories. As a matter of fact, now I can sort of sort out some categories of interactions or therapies. Therapies that work to uh, overcome and try and take control of the body itself. Sorry, I picked the picture from Alice, but <laughs> you, can, you know, if, if, am I criticizing that? I'm saying no. If you recognize the body's own wisdom, then sometimes when we go to help the body, we actually do things that harm in the hopes that it will be able to heal better after.